Okay, so what you want to do um, when you put the porcelain peel on, you can let it sit for just a few minutes or you can actually massage it into the skin. If you massage it into the skin, then you're using the um, diatoms on the skin to actually exfoliate. Uh, you can do this for up to 40 minutes, probably not on the face. Usually like feet, um, arms, elbows, areas where there's a lot um, thicker buildup of skin. But on the face, especially with someone like Gabriella that has essentially sensitive skin um, and is prone to um, eczema, we kind of have to be mindful of overdoing the peel on her. So for her, we're probably looking at about a five minute uh, porcelain peel, which we're then going to remove. And then we'll put the uh, rouge peel on. So Heidi's going to go ahead and remove that. When you initially remove this peel, you should use some 4x4s. Um, a non-woven 4x4 is fine. But once the skin is dry, you should use a um, thicker, more plush 4x4. Do you have the Miss Weeble pads there? Okay. Um, we always suggest the Miss Weeble 4x4s for this. So you'll see that she's using just a non-woven 4x4 right now, right? And then as the skin is drying, she's grabbing the Miss Weeble pads. You can get these from California Skin, skin uh, Supply, probably like Universal Studios as well. Universal Studios, Universal uh, Companies. So she's just dusting some of the diatoms and what's left of the jojoba esters off the skin. Perfect. And then, um, yeah, change your gloves because when you change your gloves, you're actually getting all of that like debris off of your hands. Super simple if you don't have a sink in your room. Now here's our new peel. It's a niacin uh, base peel. It's called the rouge peel because it makes you really red. So we're gonna apply this to um, Gabriella's skin and you're just gonna smooth it over. You're not going to rub it in. If you rub it in, you're gonna end up with a lot of product on your gloves. You really want it to actually sit on the skin because it's gonna cause like a pinking of the skin, which actually takes a few minutes. So we're going to let this sit. Um, one thing that we could do if we have a client that we know can handle this is we can start to use our nano device to get it right into the skin. This is kind of unusual in terms of peels, but because this peel has mandelic and vitamin C and basabalol and stem cells, it has lilac stem cells as well as marbleberry stem cells, um, using it with our nano device it's actually just gonna act as a catalyst. It'll help you get through your treatment faster and you're gonna kill a couple of birds with one stone. So she's going to go ahead and spray her with a little bit of spray on moisture. Normally we probably would let this sit for a few more minutes, but for video purposes, um, we're going to use our device over it after just a minute or so. So when you're putting the tip on, you want to look inside the device because you can actually see um, where the little like tip receptor, for lack of a better word, <laughs> actually is. Uh, sometimes if you put your tip on wrong, it will not vibrate properly and it won't move up and down. Um, so worried about the nano device, basically the goal is to just insert the ingredients into the actual um, skin cell, but we're still in the stratum corneum. Okay, so it's not the same as like traditional microneedling at all. 
Um, so Heidi is putting some sustenance on the skin. Sustenance is going to add an additional um, stem cell that's actually really firming, which is the Gotocolo stem cell. Uh, we're also putting Bisabolol into the skin. So we're going to get a nice pink um, look because of the niacin that's going in, but uh, we're not going to have a huge like inflammatory effect on the skin because the Bisabolol will kind of dial that down for us. And then you can spray again and put your pure base over it. When you do uh, one treatment after another in a quick success succession, you basically will end up having um, less inflammation on the skin and a more mild result. So you can kind of minimize the effect of each thing if you're looking to have a little bit less drama. When you do the porcelain peel alone, when you do the nano alone, you're not gonna have um, redness or irritation. The porcelain peel is definitely purposely gonna make the skin red because of the niacin component. I'm sorry, the rouge peel. So Heidi's mixing our um, pure base. It's actually really interesting to see someone mix it because a lot of estheticians use way too much product. So she's putting a teeny little bit. You're gonna have some chunks. This is very normal. A lot of times you can let it sit as well. So she could start nanoing right over her um, sustenance that is on our client's face. You see how she's getting nice and pink? And you can see the difference from like her neck to her face. That's a very normal um, effect. It's awesome actually. Okay, so Heidi's gonna be applying the pure base. The pure base is 100% um, hyaluronic acid and it's wheat free, which is not as common in the fermentation process. If you have a little chunk, just scrape it off, no big deal. It feels very cooling. It does, yeah. <clears throat> But what's, what's interesting is your face is actually pinking up a little bit, mm -hmm. so. Okay, so here's how we turn our device on. We're gonna hit the button. It's gonna turn on. And there's five different speeds. So each time you push the button, you're actually going to move a little faster, up to 12,000 times uh, a minute. And forehead. And she's going to start on the forehead, yeah. When you start on the forehead, um, you're going to want to go possibly a little more slowly, um, but you never want to go with a setting that is higher than the base setting, which is 0.25. You're not going to go deeper into the skin because we're talking about these little points and they do not go past the stratum corneum. However, you'll hit the skin with more force um, if you decide to adjust the setting. So you just have a little more power. I don't suggest doing that on the forehead where the skin is thinner and you have less uh, subcutaneous fat. So you can actually feel that it's, uh, it's a lot more sensational in that area. The types of movements that you do don't really matter. As long as you create a pattern where you can essentially go over each area um, twice, I would say, just to make sure you don't miss anything. You can go in circular motions or you can do the crosshatch New York City grid system on the face. It's whatever um, is going to work best for your memory of where you've been. <laughs> How's it feeling? It feels good. Okay. I like it. So again, if we were going to do this to a new client, we would separate out the services. We would not do porcelain uh, and rouge and nano together. We would do porcelain in one treatment, nano in another, rouge in another. So when you make this sound? Oh, okay, yeah. So when it starts to make a gurgling sound, you're going to hold it in a bowl of water, and it will actually clean itself. Remember, this is not 
microneedling with needles and blood, okay? Um, so what Heidi's doing is she's adjusting, getting a little more uh, power, a little more stimulation on the skin, and she's just kind of lengthening um, the way that the chip is pushing into the skin. So once you leave the forehead, uh, you can use the faster programming um, or twist it to essentially get what looks like more, more depth but where it, the client actually just uh, receives a better treatment based on the amount of pressure on the skin. If you wanted to, after this treatment, you could absolutely do um, a little bit of LED uh, over the pure base and the sustenance. So we have four, and we have three stem cells going into the skin. We have um, three Mary stems, Gotukolu, Lilac, Marbleberry. We have vitamin C. We have um, Bisabolol. Um, the acids at this point are neutralized. So we also have uh, niacin as well going into the skin. You can also go right over the lips if you want. It depends on the person, whether or not they want that or if they can handle mm -hmm. that. But getting the um, hyaluronic acid into the lips can be really beneficial because your client will actually feel like they don't have chapped lips. You can go on the neck um, if your time permits, if your client is maybe spending more money, things like that. She um, spent more money than that. She, she's what? She just spent more money. She just spent more money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it's up to you to decide how you want to partition off the face or the body or the areas that you want to work on. Um, we suggest for a treatment like this, charging a price of around $380. Um, but if the client wants to add additional areas, I would um, maybe up it by like $35, $50, something like that per area. Um, we also suggest selling your client um, packages that include the products. So it's just a little um, easier for them. So I'm just going to get a little close up. You see how she's not uh, inflamed, there's no rashes developing. Her skin is nice and pink, it's got a really healthy glow. She's getting a really good amount of stimulation that is healthy for the skin. So once she's done nanoing, um, 
Typically, you'll spray the skin with spray-on moisture and then actually massage it into the skin. And then after that, you would do um, some LED or possibly put another mask over it. You can do a little bit um, on the bones of the eye area, but just don't go um, into the movable part of the eyelid. So you can work on the brow bone and you can kind of work uh, below. Okay, so our treatment is done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist the cartridge off the pen. Um, it's easier to grab it if you grab a four x four and wrap the four x four around it. And then you can dispose of that. <clears throat> We're going to spray with a little more spray on moisture. And then we're going to rub this into the skin as much as we'll go into the skin. And then what we'll do is we'll remove it and just put some sunblock on. As you can see, her skin looks great. It's really not inflamed at all. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Oh, yeah.